In this video, we're going to talk about an example of the goodness of fit test. So this diagram here kind of shows the logic of how chi-squared works. And as mentioned before, there are two types of tests. There's the goodness of fit test and the independence or homogeneity test. So two types of tests, the first of these being the goodness of fit test. So in a goodness of fit test, the expected values come from some sort of mathematical model like a binomial distribution model. That was the football example spoken about in the previous lecture. Uh, the Poisson distribution can be used to make predictions. And you may not have thought about it this way, but Mendelian segregation, Punnett squares, are actually mathematical models that make predictions about the proportions or frequencies of offspring when you have matings between individuals. So for example, if you have a site, a locus that has two alleles, represented by capital A and lowercase a. And if you crossed two heterozygotes, right, this parent here crossed with this parent here, we use the Mendelian segregation mathematical model to figure out the expected frequencies of the phenotypes. Those expected frequencies of phenotypes come from the expected frequencies of genotypes in the Punnett square here. Right, so this heterozygote can generate one of two gametes, usually 50-50 each. Same thing here, these two gametes, 50-50 each. The Punnett square you're familiar with just kind of shows this in a box, right? How do you get this offspring genotype? Well, it's the 50% chance here, 50% chance here. So 50% of 50%, 25% chance of this genotype, and then so forth for those other genotypes there. So if we think about the frequencies of the phenotypes, if the capital A allele is dominant, then these three genotypes all look the same. They look like the capital A phenotype. And this genotype looks like the lowercase a phenotype. So our mathematical model would predict 75% of the offspring have this phenotype, 25% have this phenotype. On the other hand, if the capital A and lowercase a alleles were additive or co-dominant, these individuals would have a different phenotype from these individuals which would have a different phenotype from these individuals, and they would be present in a 25%, 50%, 25% proportions. And then finally, if the lowercase a allele was the dominant allele, these three genotypes would all have the same phenotype, this genotype would have this phenotype, and the ratio would be one to three, or 25% and 75%. So this is just an example of a mathematical model that can be used to predict the frequencies of genotypes of offspring or phenotypes of offspring. So when we do a goodness of fit test, the expected values come from our mathematical model. The observed values come, of course, from our experiment, whatever we're able to measure. And then the degrees of freedom are going to depend on how many parameters we had to use our data to estimate that go into our mathematical model. So the degrees of freedom is going to start off as the number of categories that we had. We're going to subtract the number of parameters we had to estimate from our data and then subtract one. So for example, with a binomial mathematical model, there's only one parameter that we need and that's the overall probability of success. For a Poisson distribution, there's only one parameter we need. That's the mean, because the mean and the variance are the same for a Poisson distribution. If we're comparing things to a normal distribution, we would need two parameters. We would need the mean and the variance, right? So you can actually see that the Poisson, for the same number of categories, is going to give us more degrees of freedom than the normal distribution, right? Because for a Poisson, I would take my number of categories, subtract one, subtract another, number of categories minus two, but for the normal, it would end up being number of categories minus three. For Mendelian segregation, there were no parameters estimated from the data. So you might think that the 50-50 proportion of gametes is a parameter, and it is a parameter, but that parameter was not estimated from the data. We didn't look at the offspring and then figure out how frequent each of the different gametes was produced. That 50% parameter is built into the model directly. We don't use our data to estimate the parameters. 
And that's what I mean here with parameters. It's not really the number of values in the model. It's the number of values we had to figure out from our data before we could use our model. Similarly, for the football example, there were no parameters estimated because we knew that the probability of success of winning a game was 50%. In the insect example, if you remember that one, that actually we did have to estimate one of the parameters. We had to use the data to estimate the probability of infection in order to make those calculations. So in that case, we would actually be subtracting off a one for the overall probability of infection. An example of a goodness of fit test we can look at involves crossing in a genetic experiment. So taking a pair of individuals that are heterozygous at two loci and crossing them. And if Mendelian segregation um, is correct, and if those two loci are not genetically linked in some way, then each of these different gametes would be produced in a quarter proportions. And each of those 16 different genotypes would be produced in 1 16th. And then if the capital A allele is dominant to the lowercase a allele, and the capital B allele is dominant to the lowercase b allele, then those 16 genotypes would reduce down to four phenotypes in a 9 3 3 1 ratio. This example is actually example number 11 on the course website, or you can use this direct YouTube link right here. So the link is on the course website on the examples page. And that shows all the steps to get to the values that we'll be discussing on the next slide. So I recommend going and looking at that video to see the step-by-step -step details of how we get the chi-squared value and degrees of freedom so that we can then look at the values coming up. After doing all those calculations, this is what was obtained, a chi-squared value of 9.394, three degrees of freedom. So we would then go to our critical tables from a chi-squared table for degrees of freedom three. And those values are here, and you can visualize it like this, right? On this axis is the chi-squared value. And the critical value corresponding to an alpha of 0.05 is here at 7.82. The critical value corresponding to an alpha value of 0.01 is here at 11.35. And our calculated value of 9.394 ends up between those two critical values. Therefore, we know that the p-value is going to be less than 0.05, because the calculated value is to the right of this. But it's not going to be as small as 0.01, because the calculated value is to the left of this. Right, so 9.394 is larger than 7.82 from there. So P is less than 0.05, but 9.394 is not as large as 11.35. So P is gonna be larger than 0.01. So what's our statistical conclusion? It's going to be that the frequencies of the categories are significantly different from those predicted from a model of independent assortment. And then there's our P value range. Right? P is larger than 0.01, but smaller than 0.05. Another way of stating the same thing, the observed frequencies of phenotypes significantly differ from those predicted by a model of Mendelian segregation that assumes the loci are not linked. Right? So both of these, we have this assumption of independent assortment and non-linkage, but because our p-value is less than 0.05, we're going to reject that null hypothesis, right? And that null hypothesis was based on linkage, so our biological conclusion would be that these loci for color and shape are linked to each other in some way. Now, the exact nature of that linkage, we would have to do other sorts of experiments for. The most common reason would be that they're physically close to each other on the chromosome, but there are, in fact, some other more complex factors or processes that can lead to loci having their alleles linked in some way other than physical distance. That's why you take genetics, biology 370, after this course, and that's why this course is a prerequisite for that one.